This is kind of a personal chess video. It's about my own um, obsession with chess when I was a kid. I was interested in the pieces and the cultural history of the game. I was interested in making chess sets. Fortunately, I found this book in the library. It's R.C. Bell's Board and Table Games of Many Civilizations, originally in two volumes. Here I learned that there are all kinds of chess all over the world. Here's a typical Chinese chess. Here's a Chinese game they call the jungle game. And one thing that um, Bell did that I really liked a lot is he encourages people to make sets, not only to collect sets, but to make sets because these games are for playing. R.C. Bell is the guy who started all this in my life. From there, I went on to um, Murray's History of Chess, the big Bible of chess history. It's got so much information, and uh, it's just such an amazing achievement for uh, the year when he did it, 1913. I've got a lot to show you here. This is just a very crudely made, fragmentary remains of a chess set. You can tell what's what, and I just wanted to make a chess set, so I made this out of clay. It's the kind of clay that you bake in the oven, like a regular oven, and then I paint it with acrylic paints. Maybe a little more revealing is this uh, little collection of fragments of monster heads I made when I was in fifth grade. It's pretty rough, but expressive. Now something cuter is uh, these little dowel chess piece people that I made. Now, I hope you find this as cute as I do. This is much more like where my, you know, creativity flourished. I noticed that one pawn is missing, one black pawn, but each one, these are the pawns, each one has their own little expression. Just, you know, cut these dowels and drew on them with pen and ink. So, here's something I made in school. I was in eighth grade and I had the opportunity to um, actually fire, you know, real clay in a kiln. These kings used to have crosses on them. I think my art teacher was a little bit disappointed that I was like doing this chess thing when I could have been doing something just very uh, personally expressive. Well, that was my thing. It happened that I visited the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York and there I saw a, an actual Persian chess set from the 12th century. All the pieces were there except one pawn which is a familiar situation for most chess players. I must say, this set is getting kind of nice. And it re really looks a lot like the original um, set, if you've ever seen it. It's a very famous set. There's two famous sets from Nishapur. This is the one from the 12th century. I've got them very richly painted, very true to the forms. I didn't get the um, the facets on the sides of the pawns, but I did include the missing pawn. So this is a complete set, which really would be a pleasure to play on. And of course, I made a board. Fortunately, I had a little brother who would sometimes um, entertain me by playing games with me because he wanted my attention so much. Thanks, Dave. That really meant a lot to me. I think these were based on a particular set, but I, I can't quite find it. Something, um, some old fragments of chatrange pieces. These are literally made out of tinker toys, or some, the bottom is tinker toy, the, this is a bowling pin. These are, this is all tinker toys. These are actually Lincoln Logs. You remember Lincoln Logs? Let me show you something for the blind. Feel the texture between the dark squares and the light squares. Let's put the pieces on it. 
you can see that the dark pieces have their tops flattened out so you can feel the difference. These pieces were filled with clay, I filled them with modeling clay. See, it's still soft. Now, did I have any blind friends? Was I going to play blind chess? Was I going to play with blindfolds on? No, I just thought a blind chess set was a pretty cool thing to have. So, I made one. Oh, by the way, I also did have a real blind player's chess set. The pegs are so small, it's like if you were blind, you'd be like feeling, feeling around like, where's the hole, you know? Oh yeah, there it is, you know, because it's just easier to find a large peg and large hole, a large hole for a large peg than a small hole for a small peg. Ah, these guys are modeled after a set that was carved out of bone, little flat pieces, well, basically just like this. It's really weird, and it's really weird that anybody would want to make this chess set. Here, let me uh, kind of go back and look at some other stuff here. This whole time I was also writing things and uh, making chess boards. What's this? Of chess, of tournament rules, okay. Just a basic, basic chess board. Here's something kind of nice. This is a, a board with slots in it, obviously for a little, um, you know, a demonstration for the pieces that go in the slots. This is before those days. I was making a board game with my friend Sarah. We go and have adventures all around town. It's like a non-competitive um, living around town game. Oh yeah, here's a um, Ashtapada. This is the traditional Indian chess board. This is a new one. Okay, really nice one. I can get these from India now, but in those days, you couldn't get just get stuff from India, and you know, I, I made everything. Here's a Burmese board written out in algebraic lettering: a8, a7, a6, a5. Every single square is written out. I don't know if you can make sense of that, but wow, some huge game where I'm putting all different. This is a huge board. I don't know what that's about. It's a plain, uncheckered board with all the uh, algebraic letters written out. Here's another little ashtapada, right? You can't have too many of these, you know? Just gotta keep making them. Oh, this is like a, a chart from a tournament. In my high school, these were the, the main competitors. Here's a poster where I was like making diagrams of all the different kinds of chess pieces laid out uh, geographically. The game of chess in Burma, this is chess in Persia, chess in India, chess in Thailand, we used to call it Siam. It's kind of nice drawings. It's like I was going to make a, make a whole map, but, but here you go. Now this is, this is pretty cool. This tells the different kinds of chess moves in the different games. The queen move in the ancient game, the queen move in the modern game, the elephant move in the old Arab game, bishop move, knight move in our chess, Chinese chess, Japanese chess, our chess, Chinese chess, Japanese chess. Here's kind of the, the coolest thing. This is my chess mass. Now I was going with the prevailing idea that chess originated in India. Most people still believe that, and it could be true, but I don't think the evidence is as strong as um, as it seemed to be back, you know, in Murray's day. And look, you see, I have the different kinds of chess boards all over the map, and then all these different uh, variations, courier chess, uh, circular chess. So, I don't know, this is a pretty nice piece, actually. Maybe I should frame it. Let's see, it has the uh, Richard Knowlton seal of approval. I have made my own seal to approve the things. Oh, here's another diagram, sort of similar to the other one, but larger. Nice drawings and uh, interesting. Cause I'm just trying to put it all together. See, there's all the boards. There's the cute drawings. Up. My drawing was pretty nice in those days. Oh, this is uh, new variants, and I just put them on the United States because we're the new world. Holy right? smokes. Oh my gosh. Remember the fisher Spassky match? Well, this is a diagram of the fischer spassky competition with a little explanation of the key point in each game. 
I like this one. Game two, if Fisher doesn't show up, it just stays the same, right? <laughs> Nobody moves. Oh yeah, remember game one? Fisher takes the pawn and he ends up losing. That was so huge, such a enormous promotion for chess. Two, three, four, five, six, yeah. Career chess board, a 12 by eight board. And I cobbled some pieces together to play courier chess. I made these little um, electronic game playing gadgets. And so first I had to analyze like the possible, the, the tree of possible moves. This is very uh, simple um, conceptually, but then I made it into a little game with lights that light up and you push the buttons and you move the pieces on the board and you play this simplified version of checkers. Um, here's another game that I made, the, the game Hex. You might have heard of that. Oh yeah, I was thinking about making a machine to play that bridge game I was talking or, about. Oh yeah, this was a really cool game. You can't tell from this schematic, but this just shows the electrical wiring that went with it. I had a class in building ham radios when I was a kid. I didn't really build a good radio, but I learned to draw schematics. So this is a schematic. Oh, here you go. This is interesting. Tic-tac-toe flow chart. Okay. You move here, they move there, you move here, they move there. <laughs> Let's go on to games in different parts of the world. Yes, I did have Chinese chess, and these were made out of Tinker Toy spools. You know, you know Tinker Toys, right? They're just little spools. Well, I put um, paper around the outside. I put felt on the bottom, cardboard on the top, and then I wrote all these the Chinese symbols on them. So this is this is an actual you know Chinese chess game. By the way. It fits really neatly into this little cookie tin with the word for Chinese chess, xiang qi, on the top there. I made a lot of these mats out of vinyl tablecloth. Boom! Here it is. Yeah, and you can play Chinese chess on this, you know. I just copied the calligraphy from books. I didn't know anything about Chinese calligraphy. But uh, I think I did a pretty good job. You know, you could play with this, you know. Boom, boom. What are you going to do? Boom, boom. Oh, this is another Chinese chess board made of cardboard. See? But anyway, I want to show you Korean chess. So, boom. There you go. Changi, Donkey, something like that. I don't know how to pronounce Korean, really. But I know how to play chess from Korea. And um, I did a pretty good job making these pieces. The, um, Got the uh, traditional Chinese on one side and the uh, simplified uh, Korean script on the other side. Who knows? Maybe someday I'll actually play a game with it. Of course, now I have Korean chess sets from Korea. I did make a few Japanese chess sets, um, shogi. Now, this, but I only have like odd pieces of them. This was made out of little cardboard scrabble pieces. I put two pieces together, then put a piece of um, poster board on each side upon which I wrote the simplified character for the Japanese piece. This is the silver, promotes to gold. This, uh, here's some more Japanese chessmen. They're just single sheets of cardboard with writing on them, but it looks like they got water damaged. I made a bigger one with the full two kanji style. I don't know what they are at all, but this is the board for it. See, I've made a nice, big, generous sized shogi board. Let's see, what else have I got? Oh, how about this? You're going like, Rick, what's that supposed to be? This is a reproduction of a kind of junky chess set. Apparently down in some Southeast Asian population. They are making uh, chess sets out of bamboo very quickly and disposing of them. Well, I took those designs of chessmen and made them very quickly out of clay. I got this idea from a book. You know, what I'm trying to get at here with these little pieces carved quickly out of bamboo. There's another family of games that I branched into. My favorite authors were writing about this too, so I had to mention it. This is a rather unusual board for it. Oh look, I have the directions for how to play written on here. This game is called Tall Broad or something. The main idea of this game is that there's a central figure, a king, 
and then there are little guys who are attacking him on the outside and the king's got his minions on the inside. You can see these, these are made out of uh, Lincoln logs that are cut in half and then painted. I just want to show you because there's other games like this. For instance, this is a more typical board. I guess it's mostly usually called Neftafel. It's kind of simplified. There's only a king and eight um, minions and then the attackers are uh, 16 in number. I have the instructions written on the bottom or on each person's side so you can learn it as you're playing. Nicely decorated, by the way. And I've got another one. Kaboom! Check this out. I think this is pretty cool. This is a large version of that game. Here's the king in the middle. He's got his minions all around him in a very specific order. And uh, just so you get an idea, here's a Bell's book. This is the ancient manuscript and this is um, a, a diagram he made with some defined pieces there. You can see very clearly I'm just taking this and putting it into a game that supposedly I could play. But I don't think I ever played this. I like <laughs> made the game. Then I made another game, you know? You see, I've got the typical pre-European board here. And this time is to show you my version of Thai chess. If you're familiar with Thai chess, you know, the rook is supposed to be shaped more like this. This is pretty much a Thai chess game. The bishop isn't the right shape either. This shouldn't have a split on the top there. It's funny the way I made this. It looks like one of those little um, powder sugar cookies you get at Christmas time. It could work. You would play a good game on this. I've also replaced the pawns with cowrie shells. You know, you got to remember, there was no internet, there was no particular way of connecting with somebody in Thailand or somebody who's going to Thailand. All we had was these books and these pictures and our little active hands and imaginations. Okay, let me show you something else. This is a kind of interesting little tub of things. During like around 1972, chess had become very popular, so there were these different chess games available in stores including something called Neo Chess. I didn't want to go buy a Neo Chess set because, you know, who had any money in those days? Not me. So, of course, I made my own Neo Chess set. I used um, wooden scrabble pieces and um, little pieces of paper on each side. So each chess piece had a blue side and a white side. So the game was white against blue. So you just start to set up like this. And um, if you really want to know, I'd rather play on this neat little set than on the, you know, marketed Neo chess set, which is kind of pretentious with cylindrical pieces and with gold versus silver, and you can't really tell which one's gold and which one's silver, so I like the one I made. And so, you know, you just start a game, la 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 la. Oh, I captured your piece. I put it on the side. La la. Oh, I captured your piece. I put it on the side. La 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 Oh, I captured your piece. Put it on the side. Oh yeah, this guy has two on the side, by the way. Capture your piece on the side. Okay, check, no problem. I'll take one of my captured pieces and put it down. Neo Chess. That's a brand name, so this isn't the brand. This is just the game without the, the brand. Back in the tub. So you say you don't know how to play chess? You can learn. These are the pieces that show you the moves. Oops, this board's too small. Let me change the board. Yeah, this is a good learner's board anyway, because look, it tells you where the pla to place the pieces when you start. And I even wrote in the algebraic letters, which algebraic wasn't so often used in those days. And then I wrote the algebraic and descriptive numbers here, and just the uh, descriptive numbers here. Um, if you know notation, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, these pieces will fit on this board, as you see. Now. You'd have to ask, how did I find time to do all this, to make all these sets, these chess sets? Obviously, school wasn't engaging me at all, and I, nothing in particular was, so I just indulged myself in this fascination. The neat little case I found for it fits the pieces perfectly, as you see. Yeah, closes. See? Perfect. Uh, one of these little... Peg chess sets, you know, you gotta love them.
You can go play chess with your friends at lunchtime. Let's look at something else. This is a game that really captured my imagination. It's generally known as the jungle game. Its Chinese name is Doshochi. And um, it's got little animal pieces on it, like this. They're a little small for the board, but um, uh, now, of course, I get these games from China, and I have my own set. See, this is like how I made it in the old days. I remade a set like this because I still like my little heads better than the Chinese discs. Just so you know, it, it's something like this. I'm kind of breaking the rules here by showing you like my, my, my contemporary stuff, but I just want to show you like I've gotten pretty good at this, you know. But let's get back to, you know, those early formative years. I have a better set, but for some reason I didn't quite manage to get it out. I love this game, and the kids would play this. This is a great game for kids, so I get my little brother to play this with me. You know, he really liked it, I think, didn't you? It's very easy to learn. It's kind of like simplified Stratego with animals. Poof! You know the idea of three-dimensional chess, right? Like, chess is two dimensions, you know, played on a two-dimensional board with two-dimensional action. Of course, I wanted to go the other way and bring it to one dimension. I think I made two sets for this too, but I've got one of them here to show you. I'll just line up the pieces and see if you get the idea, okay? Here. You see, they're all in a line and all the moves are like line-wise. Um, the king moves one space forward or backward. This, this piece is made to look like an ancient rook. It moves as many as it wants forward or backward, like a rook, basically, on a line. Um, these pieces, they have their elephant heads. Uh, again, I'm borrowing from the ancient forms of chess. They have a kind of a linear bishop move. They jump over, like, from one white square to the next, white, 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 white. The other one jumps over one red square to the next, red, 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 red. So they complement each other that way. This was essentially the knight piece. It moves two or three spaces forward or backward. So that kind of mixes things up a little bit. It's not a strong piece. And then the pawn just moves one space forward. Boom, boom, boom. The board is 16 squares long by one, of course. This is linear. The next one is wide. This is a hexagon with triangles and three directions of diagonal lines also defined. Here, let me change your angle a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. For some reason, I had defined certain areas with thick lines. I don't know exactly what I was doing, and then this, this red area is defined here, and so on. I'm sorry to say that, as you can see, the set is kind of incomplete. I don't remember how the pieces are supposed to move. Let's see, there's, well, there's four of this kind of piece. There's something like a rook. There's something like a, maybe a bishop. I don't know what these guys would be. These, these are obviously pawns. Um, there's not enough of them. I had some extra walnuts packed in the box because I was going to make more pawns, which obviously I needed to do. Or uh, maybe I just lost them. Here's some more walnuts. Somehow, I worked out the possible moves. Maybe I have the rules written down somewhere. I don't know. One last thing I'd like to show you is my final project that I never completed, but it sort of sums up my fascination with chess, the universal ancient chess set. This is straightforward enough. Horses. Now the old forms almost always had elephants. This guy's got his trunk broken and his rider is a little loose. Another elephant. There you go. I would have uh, ideally painted these, but never got to it. Okay, now here is your Raja, the king. <laughs> Here's the other Raja. He's, he's a little bit broken up. Let's see, he's missing his head, and he's missing his rider in the back there. King. Advisor, horses. Oh, camels. Okay. I think that would be a Mongolian camel, the kind with the two humps. Oh, and boats. Boats exist in Russian chess and in Thai chess. 
some ancient forms of Indian chess. They sort of look like those little elf shoes, you know. This is the modern Indian definition of the pieces. The king, the minister, camel, horse, elephant. Ah, look at this. Chariot. And in this case, the elephant would be in the bishop place. Yes. Elephant. Where are my pawns? I should have a whole team of pawns somewhere. Fuck. Elephants, chariots, boats, camels, advisors, kings, horses. I must have pawns somewhere. Maybe I can make them appear. Nah. I'm afraid I've got to go dig in my mom's basement again to find what happened to those pawns. And this, this has nothing to do with that. So that's what I was doing when I was about 13, 14, 15 years old. I hope you've enjoyed my little trip down memory lane. My chess childhood.